Well, people, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm down here, Weymouth Angling Centre. Got a great shop, got everything here. Look, rods, reels, clothing, bait. They've got all the bits and pieces you could need. Freshwater stuff as well. So anybody's down there on holiday, you can get your freshwater gear down there as well. And it's got the boilies. But what am I down here for? No, it's not carp. It's wait for this. It's squid. I want to. I want to find out as much as I can about you know what's on the grapevine is there's some great squid fishing down here and it's off the shore on jigs so i'm going to meet up with mackie here in the weymouth angler shop and see if we can't get a bit more information about a sort of phenomenon that's going on at the moment all right then mackie all right graham good man i see you're in the right place by the tackle by yeah. the hill. now tell us look tell people about what is this sort of history well, of the squid in weymouth um it's all started off i've been doing it for probably about four or five years yeah and um sort of started off really simple only a few went down there and chucked out their jigs and started catching a few squid. Um, and recently it's just hit off really big. People now, from all over the country. So people know Weymouth has always been known yeah. as sort of a, a yeah, squid well, centre yeah, at this yeah. time of year. Weymouth's always it's sort of been known to hold squid, big squid, numbers of squid. A lot of people come down to Weymouth just, just to catch the squid. Now just so people know, you're saying, or as I remember it, it used to be sort of December was sort of yeah. time. But you, were, you were telling me yeah. earlier on the phone that no, it was coming yeah. earlier. November, December, we usually sort of started fishing for the squid. Yeah. And then just recently, I started. I stopped fishing for them in May, thinking, oh, it's going to be over with. Started again, August. Yes. And then from August onwards, I've just been catching squid oh, most really? nights, during the day, whatever weather. If, as long as that water's semi clear and you can sort of see see what you're doing it's perfect oh really really now you've got two sort of piers here so people know it's not like fishing off rocks it's, it's, no, it's no. easy access for um, everybody yeah isn't it? yeah Any, anyone can do squid fishing all you need to do get yourself a jig get down to one of the piers so you've got the pleasure pier which is um towards weymouth beach more yeah and then you've got the stone pier which is the f further out towards the no fort you said there's the ocean side yeah, yeah that's more yeah it's a lot further out than the stone um the pleasure pier sure so fishing fishing from the pleasure pier it's just cast your jig out and you can retrieve it don't have to do anything fancy you can do a slow retrieve yeah. bounce it along the bottom and yeah you'll more than likely catch a squid this time of the year now squid, when we use them, you see them there about this long, guys, in my box, where we put one on the uh, hook out in the boat. But you're talking big squid as yeah, well. I'm yes. not saying, you know, if we get to show you a squid, but yeah. what sort There's, of numbers can people catch you on a good night? Um, I've heard of people catching up to 60 on in a night, wow. and um, some of them have been pretty big. I know there's been one which was six pound odd upwards. And, it's, and what sort of size is six um, pound squid? I mean, I can't you're measure talking it. Over two big. feet? Yeah. You're talking something like, I would call it like a kraken really, <laughs> it is, it's a monster and when, when you get something like that on your line, it, you've just got to let it take drag as well. Oh really? Oh so yeah. there's a good good bit of power with this? Yeah, it's, it's weird, it's, at first it feels like you've got a big plastic bag full of water on the end yeah. and then when it starts jetting your rod just starts diving down and it, it can be really good fun, I like it. Now we'll show, the people, we'll show you guys these jigs in a minute. Yeah, they're sort of spikes, aren't they? If, yeah. if there's a big one and it's pulling away and your drag's too tight, will it pull off? Will um, it pull out? Or are they not rare? usually. They, they get wrapped up in it. So yeah. if it is pulling away, the as soon as you get a hit from a squid, the best thing to do is just slow retrieve. Don't strike, don't do anything special, just reel it in. A bit like pollocking where yeah. you just wind yeah. them on. Just, just wind, wind it in. Because once you if you strike, there's a chance of you pulling the tent pulling out of the tentacles. Oh, I see, yes, yeah. So yeah. you just slow retrieve and um, the squid will stay on. And more often than not, there'll be four or five other squid following that squid. Oh, and I've yeah. had instances where the other squids have attacked the actual squid on the lure. Oh, wow. And sometimes yeah. you can have two squid on the same jig where they've attacked each other and they're yeah. all they've competing. Both got caught. Yeah, they've, got caught. they've all, all competing for that lure, which you're basically chucking out for them. And it's basically imitating a prawn. So, what bait fish? What do you think they're coming in um, for all these? They're after all the small pollock, the small pow. There's loads of baby mullet around at the moment. Yeah. Um, and it, they're just they're just eating anything. So do you think they actually make a difference on some of the local fish stocks when they come in? The um, numbers that are coming in now is, is much bigger than it yeah, was say yeah. 20 years ago, isn't it? With, with, with the smaller fish, obviously it's going to be eating the pollock, the all, all manner of fish. So the pollock stocks are going to be sort of low. There's there's around the piers catching them and that. Obviously you won't really catch many small fish while the squid are around. Sure. But with the squid being around, you do get that chance of always catching a bigger fish because you get the rays eating them, yeah. you get congas feeding off of them, you get bass. Sure. So you do get a range of the bigger fish coming in feeding off these squid, which is um, 
re really good for the peers as this year we've caught quite a few rays off there yeah it's um the fishing has been really good and i, I reckon it's due to the volume of squid you think they've brought them in yeah, yeah. And especially around Portland area, they've been catching poor beagles. Exactly. Some of the charter boats have been out there. And um, yeah, there's plenty of poor beagles caught. It's unreal. So with the rods and reels, I mean, you've got guys throwing six ounces lead just locally at Chesil Beach, which in case people want to know, Chesil Beach is very close to Weymouth. Um, you don't want something that throws, obviously, a big lead. So what sort of tackle do you need? All, we, all you really need, Graham, is um, you just start off with a spinning reel, size 4000, perfect to start with. You don't need anything fancy. Um, 10 pound mono, absolutely ideal, and um, just a spinning rod really, a nice light spinning rod, something that's got a nice bit of action in the tip, because what you really need to do is work these jigs, whip them through the water so it's like a little prawn moving up and down, Yes. and um, all, all you really need to do is, um, yeah, set yourself up like that, um, cast out your jigs, reel it in, and nine out of ten times you will have you'll have squid on there so anybody who just fancies squid which is a great eating fish anyway wants to come down let's say a beginner or family person wants to come down you know you can set them up with a cheap rod and reel yeah, outfit, yeah, a combo yeah. out. it sounds like it's cheap to set yeah. up no it's um you can pretty much get a spinning rod combo for 29.99 really oh really yeah and yeah. then a squid jigs two pound 49 so that will pretty much get you started off the pier to go and catch squid and um if you're not really wanting to go and cast them out and um, reel them in. Yeah. You can always use a little float. You can use little Tronics floats. They're just sort of um, used to used by a lot of bass anglers to catch bass. Yes. You use them with like a red gill behind and you pull the red gill in slowly. Yeah. What a lot of people have done is, um, I, I started doing it, is putting the squid jig on the end of the oh, trace, trace right. yes. and just using it like a, just trotting it through the water. And if there's any movement, in, like nice current in the water, so a bit of chop to it, you can just leave your float out there. Yeah. And um, it's not like a normal fish bite. What it is, is the float sort of just starts going off in one direction really quick. Oh, really? Where the squid's got hold of it and it's shooting off. Yes, yeah. And um, it can be quite hard to no notice the bites, but after you've done it a few times, you'll sort of get to grips with how it's got it. Yeah, how got it's got it. it. Yeah. Once it's got it, just steady retrieving. And um, yeah, you don't need anything special. Okay. L night lights, little glow sticks. Yes. Just little glow sticks. The squids seem to love light. So any glow sticks on your float, you can use a little tube to attach it to your line. And when, once it's attached to your line, it can give you a good marker of where your squid jig is. So when you're yes. pulling it through the water, you can see your light and you'll know, obviously, a foot behind that, my squid jig's there. So it's, yeah, it's a really good sort of indication to use okay, when okay. you're fishing well, for the squid. Okay, well, let's get a close up and just talk us through some of these squids. Recently, we've just got some new little um, jigs in, perfect for the smaller squid that you want to use for bait. Um, these are by Tubertini and they are the Seeker mini squid jigs and they're quite sort of made of uh, nice soft rubber and they've got a really nice glow to them and um, you can use these on a Paternoster style rig so you can have more than one so you can have two or three, four, five, six, however many you want down your line. Nice big weight on the bottom and you can just jig it up and down slowly and um, it will catch you your squid. So it's sort of imitating a little shoulder fish just in the water and that will, yeah work really well and we have the old sort of style squid jigs these are by Tubertini and they're just a metal squid jig with luminous paint on and they really do give off a good glow in the dark um, they're 60 about 60 grams so about a couple of ounces really and they're ideal for using in deeper water under your floats if you're off the boat for squid fishing these are something to be reckoned with out there on the boats and here we have these are the squid jigs which everyone is using off the piers and from the shore um, as you can see they're sort of prawn shaped and they're quite quite heavy than about a couple of ounces and they're quite big but don't let that put you off as squid will eat anything that moves in the water big or small and they've got little spikes on the back if you can see those there and um, what they do is squid don't bite as such they've got tentacles and the tentacles wrap around the jig and try and propel backwards with it and in doing that, they get themselves caught, and that's when you reel the squid in. But these are made, the weight on the bottom is um, there, so it sort of dives down, and then when you flick it up, it comes up like a prawn and shoots up through the water. And yeah, this is the main method to use for catching squid from the shore. And with these squid jigs, you've got the little four, if you can see that. That indicates the size of the squid jig, which is four inches. And um, yeah, it's two ounces and they are by Jarvis Walker and they're called a Razorback Squid Jig. 
popular with quite a few of the locals says so um, they use a float which is like a little tronic a tronics float this is quite a big one but you can use a smaller one they go up to you can this is an 80 gram float but you can get them up to 10 grams so if you get one of the smaller ones you can pop, pop your glow stick in there this pops out and you can just pop a glow stick in there so you can see where your float is at night and these are mainly used for to set the depth on the actual jig itself so if you set that just above the seaweed like that and then what you can do is you can just leave it hanging dormant and just let the tide do the work and the squid will more than more than likely just wrap themselves around it and you'll see your float just pulling off in the water and um, you just set the depth and that's practically well how you fish with a float you um, just slide it through like a normal sliding float rig you can put a couple of stops each side obviously straight to your jig and that's used for the depth and quite popular with people fishing down the piers are chem lights they are such a fantastic invention practically see in the dark with them use them on your float use them on your line use it to attract light and squid to your jig and um, they're not very expensive you can get a pack for about 99p and all you do is bend and snap them and there's a chemical in there and it reacts and it just glows really really bright bright green color and once you've done with them um, you can pop them in the freezer to keep them preserved and just take them out next time you want to use them and they'll still glow and yeah such a fantastic tool to keep in your tackle box especially for squid fishing well there's a lot of information there i'm sure you people there be interested in all those squid jigs i certainly am so all we've got to do is get down there and yep. you're going to point me in the right direction or definitely you're going to, we'll you're going to come down, down we'll catch we'll catch a few squid 100%. you'll come as well yeah i'm definitely going to be there you heard it on youtube the man just said a hundred percent can't wait to get down there <laughs>
And you can see I've caught some of my jig there while I've been fishing because it's still low tide. Right, a little bit through my setup. I've got a Yamashita warm jacket jig there. That's a sort of silvery colour. I can't remember the exact colour it is, but um, that's a very good sort of colour in the daylight conditions like it is now when you can pick a few up. Moving up to just a quick link there. It doesn't have to be an expensive lure clip, um, but any, any quick link. Six turn grinner knot, and then I'm on 15 pound fluoro. You don't need fluoro. I've seen people using it directly to heavy mono, heavy braid. It, it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference. That's more of a personal preference. Um, having a nice sort of light piece of mono on there. And then I have on my reel, you can see there's a nice little Shimano reel there. You only need a small reel, sort of 3,000 size reel. Um, nice little rear drag on those. <coughs> and that is 13 pound Daiwa J braid. It's very, very thin, very supple, um, but very strong, very abrasion resistant. And I prefer braid for the squid because quite often when you're letting the jig fall through the water, you get like a little tap and you think, you know, was that a take? Wasn't it a take? But quite often it's a squid grabbing it. They're not like a, a bass or a a pollock or anything like that which grabs it and runs off you'll just get like a, a, a just a little bump and then as soon as you feel that bump just wind lift into it and normally there's a squid on there um, technique wise cast the jig out allow it to sink if you're around eelgrass of course don't let it sink all the way down to the eelgrass because then it'll be smothered in eelgrass and you won't catch a squid just sort of cast out count one two three four is normally what i do and then start retrieving the handle a couple of flicks and just let the jig fall through the water and the, the, you'll find the squid always take the jig as it's falling at an angle, you can imagine the jig will hop through the water and the rattle will go, then it'll just fall at an angle, just down through the water, and the squid, you actually see them coming and taking it, they will always grab it on the fall as it's falling through the water. And I think that's why the braid's so important, because you get that bump as it's going through the water, and that's when you can, you can wind down and connect to the squid. <laughs> Your rod in your hand, Graham. <laughs> I know. That's what my wife says. Yeah. <laughs> there he is, look, on the surface. Oh, wow. Let's have a look at it. Well, mate. It's a very easy, good one. Let me zoom in on that. Um, I have got my net. Is it a bottle? Nah, it's definitely a squid. Any mates with him? Wow, it's pretty big, isn't it? It's not a bad one. It's probably just about a swimmer. It's hard to drag up. It's a keeper. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> there we go, there we go, Graham. Brilliant. I know that, that was uh, a result. I didn't even know what I got, no, to be honest. Lovely colours, aren't they? Well, they beautiful. Colour. Absolutely beautiful animals. Love my day. <laughs> and they change as well, go. as well, I imagine, colour. Angry red now, yeah, he's, um, he's getting lit up when I'm touching him. He doesn't like it very much. Will they squirt ink in here? Yeah. Or, or, yeah, or? yeah, they, I'm, some, I'm surprised he hasn't already. If I pick him up, he might do. There we go, he's trying to. So that is... I mean, it's a lovely squid, it's nice in the frying pan, but it looks like <laughs> five cod baits. <laughs> no, that's one cod bait. That's that one cod yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's you, one Steve, cod isn't it? <laughs> and I'm just zooming in on the size of their eye, you can see their oh, eye there. Can you make out the pattern on their eye? It's beautiful. It's like it's a general, um, really pearlescent, there. very, very pretty. It is actually, it's like a mirror on the inside. Absolutely beautiful, yeah. They've got fascinating eyes. A beautiful yeah, dot yeah. markings on them. Nothing like the ones you get out of the box, is it? You know, when right. you. I wonder if we can get the beak without getting done by the beak. <laughs> Have you ever been spiked or anything? I haven't. No. Yeah, oh, I see the beak there. Yeah. There it is. There you that's a business. Now that's like a bone, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's very similar to a parrot's beak. I wonder if you're going to stick to me. You can see these are the two. There's the large two tentacles. So those two do they, do they they're retract the, them? They're the that? ones that they extend, you see. It's the ones that they grab. That's their, the catchers, isn't it? The wow, they are long, aren't they? Yeah. Grab their prey with massive suction pads on the end of it. Huge suction pads. Let's just zoom in on those three folks, yeah. Do they actually stick to the back of your hand or anything like that? They, they do, yeah. He's not, okay. He doesn't seem to be doing it at the moment, do they? Yeah, they he's, do. Can't, he's, he's, he's a YouTube squid. Oh, there, you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, he's, he's sucked on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they'll use that like retractable catching tentacle to pull it back into the rest of the bunch I guess aren't yeah, they? Quite often when they follow it in as you sort of lower the jig through the water you can see them shoot both tentacles out grab the jig and pull it into them. Really? It's quite smart yeah you get a good knock on the rod as they grab it.
suction cups go into overtime and they really really work look at that <laughs> you can see how they're such effective predators on small fish prawns crabs really grips it's quite a strange feeling actually you can see it's, you probably struggle to focus in on it they've actually got a ring of tiny little teeth on the inside of those each help, one help, yeah help them grip yeah Oh, I just about see them. Just make them out. Little ridges. I can just about see them. If I go any closer, I won't see it. Yeah. Just tap your finger on that far one, Steve. Just, to, just so it sticks. I said, hold it there. How quick would that get me? I can feel the the, the teeth. It. He's trying to work the teeth in into my finger. Really? Almost. Yeah. It's very strange. Very strange. Oh wow, let's get the ink on that. He's hooked right on top of the head. He might drop off this one, he's not very well up. Ah, drag's too loose. Tighten that up. I wasn't expecting big ones in daylight. Ah, whatever. Come on, get up here then. He's out. There he is. Good show. That one, I've got all the ink coming out. That one. Yeah, you got the ink everywhere there. So these are average size for this time of year, you, you would think? Yeah, this is the average kind of size. That's a big, they're big, big, I keep want to call them fish, big fish, they're I big, know, aren't they, you yeah, know? Yeah, big cephalopod. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah. You can see he's taken it by the head, and then as I've lifted the rod, it snagged him in the top of the... Is that why top, some of these juice have got the those extra spikes yeah, on the, the back? Yeah, the extra spines, like the ones you've got, I've got those yeah. ones on the back there, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's a big one. colour already. Well, <laughs> that goes all of his weight. <laughs> Should have weighed it when you have the water. Beautiful right? squid. I'll show you quickly as well. It's a little tip for people. You see them grabbing the squid, trying to unhook them. Yeah. If you just bring them down to the, to the floor level, and then the way the prongs are designed, pulling in, if you just lift it up, it just drops off. Oh, I see. Yes, yeah. It falls easy off. As, easy as that. Just falls off. Yeah. <laughs> George has got one as well. <laughs> Okay. There's another one. There's another one. Little dinker. Good bait, oh, you're not yeah. on the specimen side. You've got to be on this side of the pier. Oh, I was down that end there. Nice to get the first one, isn't it? There it is. Get it out of the way. You know there's some more to come. Exactly. 54 inch in the Is he a big one? Yeah, it's all right. It's probably two pounds. Two and a bit. Oh, you got He's the just got to walk it to the steps down the other end because it could be a bit airy. Taking a switch for a walk, eh? It's not a monster. It's not a monster, Steve. You Is probably, you probably it, just swing it up. Why yeah, have one yet? Yeah? <laughs> it's first one. You got to take oh. your time. Sure. Lovely job. That's a good one. So glad I bought my lure box. Good show, lovely. You still on? Yeah. Good man. Let me wind my line out of the way. Just so you know, people, Mackie's got a Pollock on here on the lure. The Pollock coming up, busting on these uh, smelt. I can get my line out of the way. Yeah, that's a nice one. <laughs> We're walking down. Yeah, I'll probably make a landing from down there. Okay. He's got a nice pollock here, guys. I'm going to undo the camera. Take it with me. Just a change, change to a spinner. I'm getting quite excited myself. I've got yeah, he's got one. Got one, got one. Oh, nice pollock, yeah. Bonus to the squid. Just got to be in the right place at the right time. Cheers.
your price? Um, I was just using a little size one black minnow and just slowly trotting it down the side of the pier and um, there's been a few pollock busting on the surface so I thought I'd have a go for one and there we go. A nice little pollock there. Now that's a lure just so people know we're not... Yeah, the, just a soft plastic. It's, soft not, plastic it's, not, it's not the squid cheeks now, so no. it's, it's one with a, t a tail just, that's wobbling. Yep, yeah, yeah, just put on a little soft plastic lure just to see if I could get one of the pollock and there we go. Great fish. Nice little fish. Nice bit of angling. Nice bit of dangling. Yep, yeah, that's what it is. Let's go and get him back. <laughs> yeah, one take his fish back in then. Really? Just there. Mackie's on again. <laughs> Another pollock on the lure. Same lure? Yeah. The noise up there. You ever saw Steve? There's a charter boat coming in. Thanks for that, Steve. I told you every time I cast that white rod out, yeah, something no, happens. happens. <laughs> Has he showed on the surface? Now the camera's gonna see if we can zoom in on him. I usually bring my drop net down if I'm fishing with something bigger, but obviously. Do you think I've reached him? Um, I don't think so. I think I'm gonna have to. Stairs. Stairs. Uh, you reckon? Oh, he's going for it. No, Not fishing. quite. Steps job. Yeah, good steps. Oh, now I can get him on the shot. Hang on a second. Yep. Yeah. Right. In he goes. In the net. Lovely. Slightly bigger than the last one. I thought he was a bit bigger than the last one. Actually. Yeah, definitely slightly bigger. He's doing well on that little fish black minnow, isn't he? Brilliant. Look at that. He'll try it in the lip. Lovely. I've got to stop beach fishing this, you know, I've got to go back <laughs> on these piers. <laughs> right, let's go and get him back. This is on my, my sleeper rod as such. So that's just bait on there, see? Yeah, I'll show you how I put that set up. I mean, oh, got me right in the eye. <laughs> that was just water. Ooh, I'll show you one. Oh, it's a small float, a running float. I've got it set shallow at the moment because it's really shallow. Small. What do you say, really shallow? What would it be? Three feet, something like that, the um, depth? No, only that, only that deep. Uh, that deep, really? From to there, so it's that foot and a half, something like that, maybe? Yeah. Like and no light on that one? No, you can put a starlight in the top, but. Oh, in here, yeah? Yeah, it's quite visual here, so. <clears throat> then on the business end, I've got mackerel, which I've whipped onto. Oh I see, onto the jig. You see, onto a, it's like a metal pin that runs through the middle of your bait and then it's just got a couple of rings of spikes on there and it's really effective as a, as like a static rod, you just leave it to one side. And it's a bonus one? Yeah, exactly that, it's a bonus squid rod. <laughs> and it's a nice squid, show us that one again. Yeah. That's the squid on it. Yeah. Good size. Lovely. Well, that that's, a, that's a good bonus way of fishing because you can fish with the jig at the same time, can't you? Yeah, you can have one rod visual and then have the static one out to one side and catch a few bonus squid. I'd rather be putting a hook in that mackerel in case the bass came round. <laughs> that's the trouble. <laughs> I know. I've not had one take it yet. Perfect bait size. I want them for dinner, so it's upsetting, really. There's a cod really. there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Hook right on those catching tentacles, isn't it? Right, the long ones. Uh, you often get that when you're just reeling them. So just have a little swipe. And... Oh, there he is, I think. It's amazing how they just come back, isn't it? Oh, yeah. There's a nice size squid I've caught just there. <coughs> that one took, I don't know if you can pick that up very well, the colour of that jig. It's a sort of like a dark coloured jig. That one doesn't glow, only a little ring around the eyes and we're on behind me by the sounds of it. And um, 
I'll take that jig off quickly. Some of the jigs, if you shine the headlamp on them, a lot of guys use a UV torch and you can shine it onto the body of the jigs and they glow in the dark. They can be very, very sort of bright coloured green and the squid can home in on it sometimes. But a little trick, I think you've got one on, haven't you, Graham? Yeah, got a light stick on there, yeah. Yeah, some guys, they slide a, a glow in the dark, um, glow in the dark, uh, like a, a starlight, you know, the tip light you use. They put a tube on the line and then they slot one on, it's all about five or six inches above, and the squid sees that, comes in, homes in on that, and then you've got your jig behind it. Oh, George has got a big squid on by the sounds of it. I can hear a drag going. Lovely big squid. Does he need a net? Are you alright? Yeah, no, that's a jumbo good. for sure. That's not a bad one. That's a that's about me medium size, size to be fair. I want to get one about three foot longer than that to show you. Right, I'm going to show you a quick way to dispatch these squid. There's no point in leaving them to suffer. If you come in just behind the mantle, a, you can see the point there, which is kind of the dead, the dead centre of the backbone. The back of the head, if you go in just in there at a slight angle, and then you hit the, the spinal col column, which kills them. Kills them outright, and you can see the colour change. When the, the, the change of the colour, I'll do the small one there quickly. There we go. And that's them done then. Next step, ready for the frying pan. Size, size oh, yeah, some over there. It's just. You're everywhere. Yeah, they all sort of come in and we'll just come in and out, in and out. Swing this one, just get all the ink all right. out. Good one. Oh. I personally like to use pink, um, but when the squid are in there, they'll just literally take anything. They're not the most smartest of creatures. Would you say that works pretty well in the daytime um, as well? Yeah, pink's a good colour to use in the day. Obviously the brighter the better, but you can, yeah, any colour will work really, but everyone has their own personal favourite and um, pink just seems to be mine. And a lot of us using lights, you've got no lights on there at um, all? No, I don't bother too much. There's a lot of light in the water already. Yeah. But it always helps. They do like to chase, chase the light, but not necessity, no. no. It's not a necessity, definitely. There you go. Their eyes are so big they can pretty much see fish miles away. As soon as they're fixated on something, they will have it. Regardless. Very and aggressive predator. Very aggressive. Very efficient. As soon as his tentacles come out, they are pretty much straight on to you. The more they pull back, Oh, there we go, guys. There must be a lot of squid here because even I can catch them now. The guys are caning them. Some of the guys are getting a lot. And obviously, great to eat. I'm in a prime prime eating and prime fishing baits as well. In the bucket with it. guys finally got a nice chunky big squid there getting cold now everybody's had quite a few squid I think tonight so it's been a good night so different for me so I hope you enjoy watching the squid trip at Weymouth on the piers here totally awesome fishing show I've not done this before something different and you're coming up with monsters from the deep like this <laughs> whatever you go you couldn't ask anything finer than that 
a plate of fine English giant squid. Everybody recognises them, that's what you pay a lot of money for in a restaurant. But we're going to be taking some down a campfire, but of course, it doesn't start like this. Everybody who buys it, maybe from a supermarket, has squid rings, and they perhaps think the squid is circular with rings. No, that's how they start. But even before that, they look like this beauty. Look at the size of that. That is a squid, and you can see there the suction tentacles of their catching tentacles, those two long ones there, look, they're like rubber, they're actually stuck to the plate. And they then draw their prey right back up into the other tentacles around there and inside there, I can't show you, but inside there is the beak that they chomp everything up on. It has these wings at the back, they're jet propulsion units underwater, they're very, very fast. They're one of the ultimate predators and they're one of the ultimate eating, I'm gonna call it a fish, it's not a fish, it's a cephalopod. But even though you think this one's nice and shiny and clean, they have ink as a defense mechanism. <sighs> And here we go, the wife's not going to be happy. I've got to get all the ink out of this and I'll show you how to prep it. Now here is, oh yeah, it doesn't look quite the same as that lovely thing that you get in a restaurant. Look at the ink on that one. So this is giant squid. We were catching these ourselves off the shore last night. These are a matter of hours up. I just got home at midnight last night. This is the following morning. So now comes this problem of the big wash up because that's their defense mechanism is all this ink. The wife is not going to like this one. So we're going to wash as much ink off as we can. And this is a truly giant squid here. This might even feed three people. Now, you've got wings on the side here. They use these wings there. You can eat those. Now, down on the pier, the guys tell me one of the best bits are these long, enormous catching tentacles, which incidentally, although it's dead, look, it's still got suction to them, natural suction pop that off. So I'm going to wash this out. What I like to do is run the water down inside the body cavity and crush in here to like burst any ink sac they've got and get it out. So we'll be washed down the drain. Get that ink out first, make life. Now you can do this, some of the guys were doing it on the pier last night to be honest. My god they were catching squid like you wouldn't believe. They're sort of invading England, the southern coast of England at the moment. We've got the head there. Now just that little notch there is the start of the backbone. So I've got to try and get my finger out. Well, it's probably the best thing to do is, first thing is to give yourself some space, is get around the back of the head here. There's the eyes. Get around the back of the head. Now I've done about 30 of these already this morning. This one's probably going to be a pain because it's a big one. I want to pop out there. Just there. It's just come away. See that, that piece there? Now I've got to run my finger down the back of the spine, this is the spine, and I'm separating what looks like a piece of plastic from the back of the body cavity. And I've got to hopefully, get my hands, I can pull that out for you. And the head as well. I've got a good grip now. Tear the lot out, right? But just out of interest, look at this, what is this? Oh my God, it's a piece of plastic. That actually is the backbone of the squid. Look at the size of it. And it is literally like plastic. Look. I got I, I can barely cut it. So there you go. This you can cut off and use the tentacles as well for food. I'm gonna skip off just the long catching tentacles. You can see the giant tentacles there. Look with all the suckers. Let me wash that off. I'll show you that. You might be able to see that a bit better if I wash them off. Now inside those suckers there are tiny, they tell me, little teeth, and I can actually feel them in there. Just around with the point of the knife. So they're catching tentacles and they shoot out, grab their prey, and pull it right back inside here into the beak area, which is in there. And that's where they feed. And of course, don't forget the suckers on this. So really, there's no getting away. What I will do, just turn that off a second. I'm going to take a couple of these off. And when we get down the camp, we will actually try and see if, if these are as good as those guys down on the pier. Tell me they are. The rest of this, I'm not going to waste. That's all going to be bait for cod. Look at the size of that eye. Absolutely enormous eye in it. Ultimate predator, especially at night. Well, here you can see the body cavity and the wings either side. This is the back. 
If you get your thumb and work away through here between the back of the wings, you can make a hole like that. If you run your thumb down the back here, hopefully it's quite a big one, and tear that back wing like this away from the back of the body cavity. Look, you can eat these wings as well, we'll show you in a second. Peel that completely off. And even I've got to say that one's come off really sweetly. Trim those two wings down, peel off the surplus skin, and there you've got another piece of food there, or bait, whatever you want. You can see there the skin peel, peels off like that. I'll just show you with an eye because my hands are so slippery. So that goes there. So we get the rest of this skin off. It just peels. But what I find sometimes, because your hands do get slippery doing this, get yourself a knife. Just get. I'm not cutting it. Look, I'm just easing that that away, and I can roll it around and just easing the skin off. Sometimes it's just a job to get hold of it with your, with your fingernails. And I don't want to get my varnish chipped on my nails, do I? There we go. There's the skin. Absolutely beautiful piece of in the rubbish with that a squid. Now, final trick that the guys down on the pier told me that they do. It's a bit it's a bit fiddly, but it's well worth doing. You want to clean the inside out. If you get your thumb and you push on the pointed section here, now it might not work on this one because it is a fiddle to get started. There, look, I'm pushing my finger, making this inside out, right down like this. And then you can gradually roll that meat right down the inside. I'm not sure I can get hold of the whole lot here and peel it. I'll tell you what I do do with a longer fish like a longer squid like this, I can push it out with either a piece of stick or the back handle of a knife. With small squid, you can get your finger from one side to the other and pick it up in there. This is a giant one, so what I do is I get something wooden like this, a wooden handle off a steak basher, and I can push it, and I can bring the inside, hopefully you see this, I'm turning the whole thing inside out. I've not normally done this, but the guys down on the pier said this is a way to prep them properly. Now you can see I can get to the inside of it. Any other bits of uh, guts and gunk that are left there, I could just scrape off. Now you can bake these whole. And this is a big one. This, this is a lot for us to eat. I hope the cameraman is going to like squid because he's going <laughs> to get it. Beautiful white piece of meat. And of course all you do is get your knife to make your squid rings and you can cut them like that. I think phase two is going to be the frying pan. Right, you see how to prepare the squid? It's all there, ready to go into the frying pan. But I've had a text, and it's worth reading because it comes from Wayne Common, who's a fisherman, and not just a fisherman, but a specialist fish cook. And we were talking about squid, and he says here, I will read it. Personally, I would cut a squid mantle, there you go, squid mantle, the main bit, into two three-inch sections and lightly score it diagonally each way, then flash fry it in a little oil with pepper, soy sauce, and sweet chili sauce. Now, I never thought of that. We've got soy sauce, we've been out and bought some sweet chili sauce. We can get this pan heated up, and we're gonna see what comes out at the other end.
So there we go, very colourful, don't feel more potatoes. Mange two peas, which I call manky touts, that's how it's spelled, and the squid. Enjoy.